This has got to be one of the coolest exotics Bungie has ever made. And that is the exotic bow, TQ's Divination. This is the seasonal exotic this season in Season of the Chosen. And this bow does some very special things. Number one, it synergizes with Warmind cells. Number two, it's an excellent ad clearing weapon, but simultaneously an even better DPS weapon due to its ability to chain explosive damage on single targets. So today's video is going to be a review of the bow as well as a review of his exotic catalyst which greatly changes this bow there's a lot to be done when it comes to earning the exotic catalyst on tqs but very much worth the time and dedication and we'll give some tips on that one we're also going to go over a build which i've been utilizing a bunch inside of pve and it has now risen in the ranks as one of my favorite builds for spawning warmind cells and getting those massive warmind explosions so first let's just start with the perks guys on tq the exotic trait is sacred flame hip firing this weapon fires multiple traits tracking projectiles. Targets marked by these projectiles explode upon death or when struck by another sacred flames explosion. Now the trait found on this weapon is causality arrows. Arrows fired while aiming down sights cause sacred flames to instantly detonate. Precision hits with perfectly drawn arrows increases the power of this detonation. Now the exotic catalyst on this actually allows for perfectly drawn arrows that detonate sacred flames to increase its arrows damage. Striking targets unaffected by sacred flame instead refreshes causality's arrows duration. So there's two ways to shoot this exotic bow, hip firing or aiming down sights. If you were to hip fire, you'll notice that there will be tracking aim Aim bomb boxes on enemies in front of you. TQ can actually track up to three enemies at a time. And as long as you get that tracking box around them, shoot your arrows off and pretty much those arrows will find their target. The tracking on this is pretty nuts. And you can just sit there and hit fire enemies over and over again and they'll explode. It doesn't do that much damage, but just overwhelm your enemy with a thousand cuts and watch the explosions happen. But against single targets, this is when you really want to start combining hip fire shots to your aim down sight shots. Essentially, you apply the burn effect, which doesn't necessarily do burn damage. It's just a burn effect. Then you aim down sights to immediately proc detonation damage. And you can continually keep chaining this over and over. Hip fire, aim down sights, hip fire, aim down sights again. But to even make this even nastier, if you aim down sights with the perfect draw, this actually increases your damage even more. And if you aim down sights with the perfect draw, detonated those sights Secret flames and it happens to be crits you'll get even more damage this is why this bow is so fantastic when it comes to doing damage against single targets yes you can run around clearing ads with this weapon you can hip fire all you want or chaining those hip fire to aiming down sight shots to get even more damage out. But when you run up against a high health target, you don't have to do what you normally do, which is stow your bow and pull out your special weapon. No, you can back up, look that man in the eye, proceed to hit him with a hip fire shot and go to pound town on him with sacred flame wombo combo action. But to make this bow even nastier, we have TQ's catalyst. Now, this increases the bow damage itself. And you'll notice at the bottom left hand of the screen, you'll see stacks of causality arrow accumulating. Now, in order to get these stacks, you have to land perfectly drawn arrow detonations. Meaning you land the hip fire shot, you then proceed to detonate it. It has to be a perfect draw every time, which is why the exotics Oath Keeper has now made its way back into our exotic arsenal as it comes with the exotic perk adamantine brace where your bow charges can be held indefinitely because there are times where you do mess up your draw you either shoot your arrow too soon or you overhold your draw for too long thus messing up that perfect draw oathkeeper comes in makes life a lot easier here now in order to stack those stacks of causality arrow you just need a perfect draw it does not have to be a precision hit Although landing precision hits greatly benefits you by increasing that damage, especially that detonation damage. But as far as acquiring those stacks of causality, you simply just got to get a perfect draw following up those hip fire shots. And again, you've got about five seconds in between shots in order to add another stack of causality error. You see why Oathkeeper here is extremely beneficial, allowing more room there to breathe as I really want to try to get a crit shot in every time because a difference in damage, body shot damage versus crit shot is 81% there in difference. So it's a ginormous benefit to always try to land crit shots, but not at the cost of losing your causality stack. 
So it's much better to keep chaining those stacks, which takes us to the damage numbers themselves. Big shout out to Floppy Were on Reddit. I'm gonna be using some of his numbers, but they pretty much go hand in hand with mine. And these are the damage values with each consecutive stack of causality. You notice a ginormous jump there all the way to the top capping out at about 101% at causality arrow times six. Now I was cross checking with mine and I felt like I reached that 101% at stacks of five, but there's just a lot going on. Regardless though, that's how much of an increase in damage you get, which is pretty substantial. And again, what's so beautiful about this is you can track multiple targets. Say you want to track three targets and then you proceed to trigger the explosion with that perfect draw on just one of them. If the other two targets are in close enough proximity, you'll actually get causality times three from just one shot. So there's multiple ways to climb the ladder here in stacking causality which greatly benefits the damage here on this boat. Something to remember though is not to try to get too much in a frenzy of stacking causality and hanging on to it when it comes to just clearing ads. You can easily clear ads with just the bow by itself. The extra damage that the exotic catalyst gives is nice and definitely helps with all damage, but its true benefit is mainly when dealing damage to single targets. Those high health single targets, champions especially this season, considering we can use overload rounds for our bows. I wouldn't necessarily try to incorporate those stacks of causality when it comes to clearing ads, although you can. The main place you wanna really try to stack those stacks is when dealing single target damage. And if you think this is nasty, if you're in a fire team with other fire team members also using this bow, if you have one fire team member applying the burn with the hip fire shots, you can literally just sit there and aim down sights the entire time. Keep doing perfect draws every single time and it'll proc that sacred flame explosion and continually adding stacks of causality. So again, this bow gets even stronger if your fire team is also using this bow. As far as PVP goes, I know we haven't really talked about this bow in PVP and it is fun inside of PVP. We're gonna do a separate build video because there's some disgusting things about this bow. Number one, you don't have to do the follow-up shot with this bow to get that solar explosion. Meaning, I can apply the burn effect with my hip fire, then proceed to swap to my kinetic weapon, finish the opponent off in that duration and still get a solar explosion. So you can imagine we're gonna come up with some ways to incorporate this inside of a PVP build. However, this is just a one-on review here. The damage inside of Crucible does increase starting at 137 at the bottom all the way up to 169. And notice right here, it also caps his numbers cap out at stacks of five and six, which was the same situation I was running into in inside of PVE. I felt like it would cap out at stacks of five and six. Not sure if that was intentional, but it appears he too also ran into the same issue where it would cap out. And again, these damage numbers are just showcasing the direct arrow damage itself. The explosion damage always stays the same. That does not increase. That sacred flame explosion is the same. The exotic catalyst purely increases the direct damage of the arrow. Oh man, I hope I'm not getting anything wrong here, guys. There's just a lot in regards to this weapon. I'm having to like cross reference and check and all kinds of stuff. There's just a lot happening with this bow, but just the skinny, it's good. This is one of the nastiest bows inside of PVE. And it's one of my favorite bows now, which takes us to the build portion of this video. That's right. This bow does solar damage. And considering it also does solar explosive damage, when we combine it with Wrath of Rasputin, solar splash damage, final blows have a chance to create Warbind cells. I want you to take Wrath of Rasputin. I want you to combine it with Rage of the Warbind, which adds an additional solar damage explosion to your Warmind cell. Tag on some burning cells to allow your Warmind cells that are bursted to cause burn damage, which is just some extra damage on top of that. Also add it with some Fire Team Medic because healing is important. I know a lot of us just want to go for damage, but it's nice to get your health back for you and your allies. And of course, Global Reach, which extends the distance and radius of that Warmind cell explosion. Guys, Tiku's Divination will rain Warmind cells down on you better than any other weapon I've ever seen. The only weapon that might come close to it is of course just I those weapons and seven serif weapons. But even then, I think TQ does better than those guns due to the fact that the explosion is so big and so powerful that something is being touched by that solar damage, thus resulting in Wrath of Rasputin proccing and presenting you with Warmind Cells to explode. And again, the thing about Warmind Cells, especially with Rage of the Warmind, when you see a Warmind Cell pop up, pop the first one and wait about five, six, seven seconds to pop the second one. And the reason why you want to do that
that is you can chain Warmind cells back to back. Every time you do that, Wrath of Rasputin will continually keep procking. A lot of the times, the reason why it doesn't reproc is you don't give it time to reset. There is a small cooldown there. But hands down, this has become one of my favorite builds inside of PvE. It's so deadly. I never would have thought a day would come when a bow outside of Leviathan's Breath would be worth a damn inside of PvE when it comes to single target damage. I know that Trinity's Ghoul is good. I like Trinity Ghoul. I even like Luminark. We even made a build this past week with Luminark as it's fantastic for dealing with overload champions. But in terms of the ability to go between clearing ads and single target damage, with also the bonus ability to spawn Warmind cells, TQ's Divination is one of the nastiest PvE weapons in the game. On top of that, it's fun as hell. So guys, that is our review there for this bow. For those that are trying to get the exotic catalyst, there is a lot of steps that's involved. It's pretty straightforward in what it wants you to do in regards to getting kills, collecting orbs, playing in the core playlist. The main suggestion I have is don't begin this catalyst until you get level 22 in the season pass. That catalyst quest boost Omega allows for progression to quadruple, cutting down the time frame for this exotic catalyst massively. Do not do this unless you have that season rank or it's going to take you literally forever. As far as the catalyst itself, Wonder said it took him close to 600 kills while aiming down sights to complete this catalyst. He said that it was actually bugged in its hip fire. I don't think it's bugged because it was working for me, but it definitely took me way more than 600 kills. I was killing Shadow Thrall. It roughly took me about 40 minutes or so, but it was like 5,000 Shadow Thrall kills. So it's quite a bit, but honestly, just sit there and hit fire over and over again. Get those AOE explosions and you'll be chaining kills back to back. So guys, good luck on this exotic. It's a fun one. One of my favorite weapons. If you like the base version of it already, by God, get that exotic catalyst. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.